dude, the, the story, the NFL story is what we're going to talk about now. That's, that's what I'm going to start off with. Okay. But speaking of babies and, uh, all of these babies in the chat, time to educate all of y'all. They carry some open, you know, let's get started. Let's get popping. Let's do it. Joined by Brian Flores, who was the head coach of the Miami Dolphins for the last several years, who was released last month and has filed as of and yesterday a lawsuit against the National Incredible. Football League about its hiring practices. Also, here are his attorneys, Doug Wigdor and John Elefterakis. Yes. Thank you all for Thank coming. You. Yeah. Um, you. And Brian, let's just jump in. We have 20 minutes here, so we will be able to cover a lot of ground, and we are delighted. Um, you filed this lawsuit, which yeah. you are aware is obviously going to have enormous repercussions. What was the tipping point for you through your experiences that made you feel this was something you needed to do? Well, I mean, just, you know, I've been on, you know, several interviews over the years. Um, and look, I mean, this is, we didn't have to file a lawsuit for, for the world to know that there's an, an issue from a hiring and firing um, um, Practices so why did in the National Football League. Why did that, that's um, correct. A lot of people just, yeah. have pointed this out. So why did you feel you needed to do this? Because we need change. That was that was that was the number one reason. Um, and I know there's there's a sacrifice, there's risk to that, but um, at the end of the day, um, we need change. We need change. Um, I, I know many very capable um, black coaches. Um, some of my staff who I know. Um, if given an opportunity or when given an opportunity, they're going to go and do a great job on their interview. Um, the NFL is comprised of an athlete base that is 70% black. So on the field, 70% of the players are black. Okay. 70% out of the, I guess, 27 coaches, there's only one black head coach. Uh, and from what I understand and God damn, I am such a sports ball Andy right now. But Brian Flores uh, has, or 32 coaches, oh, sorry, uh, 32 coaches, five teams without a head coach currently, only one black head coach, okay, and only two non-black uh, or non-white head coaches other than that. There's one Lebanese coach, and then there is one uh, Puerto Rican coach. So other than that, every other team is coached by a white dude, okay? Now... This conversation is really annoying because immediately people are like, oh, pff, you want to hire someone just on the, on the basis of them being black? It's like, no, but also 14. if you are to tell me that there is not a single good black coach that is good enough that like, you know, there are five teams with no, no, he no head coach at the moment. You're really telling me that there is not like one good black coach. I mean, Brian Flores literally was a winning coach. You look cute as hell. Okay. Who got fired? The, the, the lawsuit is comprised of like, the, there's a couple different things going on right now. Okay. So we're going to unpack uh, these, these different elements of this lawsuit because one of them is about racism, which uh, goes against the Rooney rule that the NFL has, which they established in 2003. And that's like the classic lip service, like aesthetic liberalism, uh, diversity quota uh, rule that they passed in 2003 which uh, dictates that every, you know, that requires league teams to interview ethnic minority candidates for head coaching and senior football operation jobs. And it's like an affirmative action uh, uh, principle, basically. But it's just lip service. It's just lip service. And his, and his experience that he is going to describe here, before we get to him, actually, I think we'll, we'll do the refresher here that's like a lot better to probably uh, go through the, the details. His experience with Bill Belichick kind of, proves that the Rooney rule is simply just a basic lip service for liberals, aesthetic liberalism uh, uh, moment, okay? The second part of it is, as uh, Jarwas uh, points out here, the second part of the problem is that in order to get a better pick in the draft, the Florida Dolphins, the Dolphins wanted to, or Miami Dolphins, Florida Dolphins, the Dolphins wanted to lose, Okay, so they wanted to pay him to lose. They wanted to pay him 100K in bonuses for every loss in 2019. I said Florida Dolphins. Wow, um, uh, so they have a better draft spot. Okay, and then they had the f they fired him because he was winning too much. So we'll talk about that part of it as well. So let's sports talk boy equals yes. Yeah, I mean, here, let's just continue. Brian Flores is also the only Dolphins coach since 2003 to have consecutive winning seasons. 
it's not even about racial quotas or anything. It's literally just not only picking white people, Lamau. How do people think that that's normal, but hiring a single black person is going too far? Racism. Let's continue. Claiming racial discrimination in pro football. Former Miami Dolphins coach Brian Flores is suing the NFL and three teams claiming, quote, in certain critical ways, the NFL is racially segregated and is managed much like a plantation. Spare me the shock. Don't, don't be shocked that this is going on. The yeah, I mean, it, it is it is shocking, guys. Guys, you might be shocked to find out that the NFL is racist. Oh, I am so, I'm so surprised. I mean, God damn, dude. The NFL fan base, well, at least some parts, certain parts of the fan base is racist as shit as we saw with the whole Black Lives Matter movement with Colin Kaepernick. And the NFL team owners are obviously, you know, a part of that. Even when they're trying to be anti-racist, like the, the, like the Raiders guy, uh, the Raiders billionaire with the weirdest haircut on the planet, it's still a gigantic hit and a miss. Uh, what's the f a swing and a miss? Sorry. What, what's the, uh, yeah, no, we're going to talk about Jets in a second. W Will and I had this conversation earlier today, and it was pretty funny. Um, what was it, Mark Davis, when he came out with, like, that dumbass tweet? Like, the I can't, none of us can breathe or whatever? Anyway, we'll, we'll fucking, we'll, we'll talk about it. But it, it's just, it, it's hilarious, okay? Uh, this part. In certain critical ways, the NFL is racially segregated and is managed much like a plantation. Its 32 owners, none of whom are black, profit substantially from the labor of NFL players, 70% of whom are black. The owners watch the games from atop NFL stadiums in their luxury boxes, while their majority black workforce put their bodies on the line every Sunday, taking vicious hits and suffering debilitating injuries to their bodies and their brains, while the NFL and its owners reap billions of dollars. It's true. It is true. The NFL is incredibly exploitative. It's gotten better over the years, but it's still horrible. Okay. The, the idea that like we have no, the idea that they are standing in, in front of uh, like actual critical CTE research, because that means that it'll hurt their bottom line. When we find out that like, you know, being concussed every goddamn weekend is probably not good for you. And it ends up making you do mass murders because your brain is broken. That's not good for the NFL. So we can't, we can't have that. You're happy for them. Then off it to babysit sometime. They farm That's Pop Warner cool. Little Leagues too. It's yeah, I mean, of course, of course they do. <sighs> so yeah, the the NFL to the CT the NFL to CTE is like Exxon Mobil with climate change. Like they've known for a very long time, and they have stood in front of it for a very long time. Oh, here, this was the Raiders tweet. I can breathe. Oh God. Anyway, this is when you're trying to be. This is the least racist NFL owner, by the way. Turn it up. Ah! That's what he looks like. Billionaire, by the way. Flies in his private jet to get that haircut, by the way. Personally. Okay, so let's continue. Vince fired Flores last month after back-to-back -back winning seasons, but the team failed to make the playoffs. The lawsuit even it's accuses Dolphins owner Stephen Ross of offering to pay Flores $100,000 for every loss during the 2019 season to secure a higher draft pick. There are a lot of accusations that obviously he has been holding on to, and he decided that he was going to file that lawsuit, which was filed today, again, seeking unspecified damages. Flores also stash. claims the NFL and certain teams discriminated against him and other black coaches, saying he was subjected to sham interviews, only held so teams could satisfy league rules about interviewing minority candidates. The complaint revealed... And that's precisely what happened. Like, it's just, it's exactly what happened. He got a text message from Bill Belichick that thought that he, he thought he was texting the right Brian or the, the other dude who ended up getting the position over him a week before he actually interviewed for the position. It was like, yeah, congratulations on, uh, on your new position. Okay. And he went in. Yeah. Brian, the ball, the bull. I don't know how you say it, whatever. Uh, he went into the interview knowing that he hadn't gotten the position. How crazy is that? Stable? Okay, I don't care. Reveals text messages Flores received from Patriots coach Bill Belichick last week, where Belichick indicates the Giants already gave the head coaching job to another white coach three days before Flores was scheduled to interview with the team. The fact that you have to have a rule to interview minority coaches is a problem. That's the problem. It's to create this whole utopia that everybody is equal in the NFL. 
70% of NFL players are black, but there are no black owners, and after Flores' firing, only, only one black head coach. In a statement, the NFL said it will defend, quote, against these claims, which are... It's just pretty funny because, like, they fired the one black coach for being too good. ...are without merit. Adding the NFL and our clubs are deeply committed to ensuring equitable employment practices. The teams named in the lawsuit include the Dolphins and Giants. They have denied any wrongdoing. Um, there, you know, there has been a long discussion about the. Um, how exactly does the NFL know that it is without merit? The, anyway, let's the, continue. Hold on. Discrepancy between how many black players are on the field and the number of black coaches. And there's been a push to get uh, more diversity in the the coaching departments in the front office. Um, and so Montana, now we have lawsuits for some, a coach that's come out saying I have two winning seasons and um, we're not getting equal opportunity as black coaches. Yeah, he says he knows he's possibly risking his career by doing this, but he wants to make sure that his stance against systemic racism will lead to positive change for generations to come. So we will we'll see. Be following that story. God damn it's so loud. George Stephanopoulos, you loud bitch. Um, so we already talked about the Rooney rule, the original, the rule is named after Dan Rooney, the former owner of the Pittsburgh Steelers and former chairman of the league's diversity committee. It was created as a reaction to the 2002 firing of head coaches, Tony Dungy, of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and Dennis Green of the Minnesota Vikings at a time when Dungy had a winning record and Green had just had just had his first losing season in 10 years. Shortly afterwards, U.S. civil rights attorneys, uh, U.S. civil rights attorneys, uh, uh, hold on, uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Cyrus Mary and Johnny Cochran released a study showing that black head coaches, despite winning a higher percentage of games, were less likely to be hired and more likely to be fired than their white counterparts. So it's not even like the NF this is not new to the NFL. <laughs> like they literally set this bullshit ass rule up specifically for this reason. Okay. I'm going to say all the names wrong. I don't know anything about football other than stuff like this. And I find it very funny and interesting when stuff like this happens. Okay. So, uh, so yeah, when the Rooney rule came out, there were what three black uh, head coaches and now there is one. So <laughs> I don't know if it worked, bro. I don't know if the rule worked. Um, and here is former Cincinnati Bengals uh, head coach Marvin Lewis uh, seconding Brian Flores' claim that black coaches were receiving sham interviews for NFL teams. Lewis says he interviewed for the Carolina Panthers when John Fox had already been picked. The job, and, and I can recall that we had uh, lost uh, to the Steelers in the second round of the playoffs. And I remember sitting home on Monday, and I think it was Chris Mortensen or someone else reported that, that Foxy would be named the head coach of the Panthers on Friday. And when I went to work Tuesday, Brian came in and said, hey, I just got off the phone with Ozzy, and the Panthers want you to come down and interview for the job. I said, Coach, I, I just heard last night on TV that it's they're going to name Foxy months. the coach Hospitals. on Friday. He said, so he goes back, he talks to Ozzy, talks to the people, and, and I end up. He was not fired because he won too much, uh, as that was three seasons ago. He was fired because he wanted a new QB, but ownership did not. I'm going down to, to Charlotte and so forth and meeting with the – the Richardson family, and, you know, they said that wasn't true and so forth, and they named John the head coach on Friday. So this is just another queer fighter pilot argument. It does nothing for the working class. What? Do we need more black owners so they can extort money for the new stadiums out of cities? Fuck the whole thing. So I've talked about this before. Uh, like, representative politics that specifically pluck, like, a singular person from a marginalized background and elevate them uh, are, are Band-Aid solutions, Okay. And that the ultimate goal is still to offer material restitution and provide material equality, okay, to all, uh, to all Americans, to all workers around the world, right? So a lot of this stuff is just aesthetic liberalism, okay? It's just purely aesthetic liberalism. It doesn't really do anything. Uh, it, it is just, you're just like looking out singularly for uh, whatever individual is actually uh good for that job but it doesn't matter because like when we're talking about coaching positions when we're talking about uh when we're talking about coaching positions when we're talking about like front office positions uh executive positions management positions like it does address um a a need right if 70 percent 
of your workforce, your primary labor force is black, and then you have no black people in managerial positions or very little black people in managerial positions, and you don't have any black people in like executive positions or ownership positions, then, you know, they're not going to address uh, any of the needs of their workforce from the point of view of like systemic racism or discrimination that they're facing. So it's still like a minor step towards progress. It's not the end all be all of progress. I'll never say that. Oh man, if we have more black coaches, like that's going to be so much better. Like it's not, that's not the, that's not the final solution for uh, racism. Right. But it's still a step towards, it's still a step towards uh, ultimately making the labor force or, or understanding the desires and needs of your labor force. Okay. That's what I mean. Is you're just you're just adding don't say final solution oh sorry okay well you know what i mean um this happened in tampa in 2010 detroit in 2017 and arizona in 2018 nfl teams routinely fire competent or good black coaches to hire mediocre to bad white ones another month of avoiding the top of the hour ad it's almost like how there are communities that are 85 percent black or more and the police for the community are 95 percent white wanting more black cops while wanting less policing is still a good thing no I think wanting more cops from the neighborhood that they police is a little bit different than just saying we want more black cops. More often than not, that means that uh, they will be from the same neighborhoods, but no, more black cops or a more diverse police force is not going to end uh, police brutality. It's a little bit different because the relationship between cops and the people that they police are a contentious one, whereas the relationship between a coach and its players is not. Um, Thank you, Coffee Dave, for the five get the subs. Thank you, Burkini Kill, for the five get the subs. Having more black cops does not address uh, issues of police brutality. Having more cops come from the same community that they're policing, however, will actually, it won't end police brutality, but it will eliminate some of the police brutality. Don't say nope, that's 100% true, okay? It's a fundamental part of, it's a fundamental part of community policing. It's a fundamental part of, uh what do you call it it's a fundamental part of like actually policing your own neighborhood it just straight up if you're from that community you don't treat every single person uh that you are supposedly policing like an occupying force okay anyway um and no poc cops are not nicer uh, in general I, like i said police should absolutely be from the districts that they are policing okay a big part of a big part of police brutality comes from having these uh these cursory neighborhoods where all the cops live in which is an entirely separate district that is getting all the taxpayer funded salaries to pump into a completely different district that now has way better schooling way better education they're outsiders that are policing a community without recognizing uh, the, the underlying needs of that community. That is the big issue. POC cops uh, don't actually, if they're still in those reactionary neighborhoods, they still behave like uh, invading, occupying forces. It doesn't matter. And in a lot of instances, POC cops will then turn around and fucking, uh, you know, overcompensate for their background too. So it's not, you know, it's not, it's not about that at all. Okay, let's just continue with this. You know, uh, I, I don't know, you know, again, that's the situation I was I was in. But you have to go. You have to go and prove uh, that you're worthy to become the head coach. And, uh, you know, and, and it's, you know, you're appreciative of the opportunity. But what was supposedly going to happen ended up happening in that case for sure. Don't you think that would increase the corruption rate of every cop lives in the district? What? No. What corruption rate? Policing as an institution is fundamentally broken in our capitalist organization of the economy, okay? That's number one. So uh, you have to do a complete overhaul of the way policing works currently. What I'm simply suggesting as far as like having people be from the neighborhoods that they actually police would be a small step towards actual tangible progress, not necessarily solving the problem itself. What's up, my man? But... It's not one that you can uh, solve with like, oh, more black cops. That's going to solve the issue. Uh, but if you're talking about corruption, like the institution is corrupt from the top down. Okay. Speaking of the top, the top of the hour ad break is not a corrupt institution, especially when you have a counter force against it, which is, of course, the $5 a month subscription. Now, of course, some of you don't have $5 a month to pay for the subscription, but at least you have Twitch Prime. By connecting your Amazon Prime account, you're just going to get one free Prime subscription a month. And even if you don't have that, maybe you're lucky enough to get gifted a sub like uh, one of the five that Coffee Dave or Burkini Kill just uh, gifted. Okay. But if you're not lucky, you got to make your own luck. By stealing someone else's Amazon Prime and connecting it to your Twitch account. Here's the woman ad break now. Let's continue with the story. I just want to say thank you. So last week, um, 
I interviewed for the Giants position. Um, I was set to Thanks. interview on Thanks. Thursday, Thanks. The, Thanks. the Monday Thanks. prior. Uh, before before I interviewed, I received Avenues, a text right? message uh, from Bill Belichick saying congratulations on the Giants, basically, essentially congratulations on the Giants job. Um, uh, it was a little bit of back and forth. How f***ing sad is that? Sounds like you have landed. Congrats. Did you hear something? I didn't hear Giants. I interview on Thursday. Uh, womp, womp. I think I have a shot at it. Yeah, there was some back and forth and... Some confusion uh, because... Yeah, you haven't sat down with the Giants yet. I have not sat down with the Got Giants. Got it. I hear from Buffalo and NYG that you are their guy. Hope it works out if you want it too. That's definitely what I want. Hope you're right, Coach. Thank you, Coach. Are you talking about? Are you talking to Brian Flores or Brian DeBall? Just making it's sure. Fourth, and I just uh, I asked him, "Is this, are you talking to the right Brian?" Mm. Um, and uh, as you, you've seen them through the text messages, he was actually uh, uh, thought he was texting Brian DeBall, who they ended up hiring. Yes, sir. So at that point. How did that make you feel knowing that you were walking into an interview where a decision might have already been made? Uh, it was a range of emotions. Uh, humiliation, uh, uh, disbelief, um, uh, anger. Um, you know, I've worked so hard to get to, to, um, to where I am from a, uh, in football to become a head coach. Um, put 18 years in, in this league, and it, it was... Uh, uh, to, to, to go on at what was going to be a, what, what felt like, or what was a sham interview. I was, uh, I was hurt. And, but you uh, went knowing. Dude, it's so sad. It, it, like, can you imagine you're like a fucking successful coach? You have an awesome opportunity. Okay. You think that this like institution wants you. You think this institution wants you. You think you're like going up for a position and they're going to do what's right and like give you the time of day and actually interview you. Meanwhile, the position has already been hired and they're only interviewing you because of some lip service thing called the Rooney rule. Like they're literally only interviewing you because you're black for like a second. How disgusting is that, dude? Like that, that sucks. That absolutely sucks. That you probably weren't going to get it. Why did. why did you continue to go? Uh, I think, uh, I, I, Flores wasn't even a bad head coach. He wanted Justin Herbert or QB, but management took Tua Tagovailoa and then Stephen Ross, Miami Dolphins owner, wanted Tom Brady in free agency, which Flores didn't want to do because it would have been tampering. Management wanted to get rid of Flores because they wanted Deshaun Watson while Flores didn't want him. After they fired Flores, Ross came out and blamed them going after Watson on Flores. Dude, that's too much sports stuff. I don't... Uh, you're... 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 You're giving me too much sports ball shit, bro. Come on. Maybe it's call it... Call it the audacity of hope. Um... And uh, I was, you know, I have a belief that, you know, there's good in people. I, I just do. Um, we and, knew uh, he wasn't getting that job. At, on the day before that, that Giants interview, we, we reached out to you, CBS, to, yeah. to, both, to all of you, to, yeah. to start talking about doing this interview today because we knew he wasn't getting the job. We knew it was a setup. We knew they were just trying to comply with the Rooney rule. We started drafting the complaint, and, uh, and here we are. The Giants say they are pleased and confident in the hiring process. Uh, I get the sense from the lawsuit and from you right now that you had a feeling like, here we go again. This wasn't the first time you felt discriminated against in the league. Is that yeah, true? Yeah, I mean, I've, I mean the, ruling, the ruling rule is in, intended to uh, you know, give minorities an opportunity to sit down in front of uh, ownership, but I think what it's turned into is um, an instance where guys are just checking the box. Um, and that's been the case. I've been on some interviews in the past that, um, where that's, I've had that feeling. There's you know, always no way to, to, to know for sure, but, um, but you know, and isn't I know, I know, I know I'm not alone have there. have to have the Rooney rule. I think, isn't I think, that, you know, even, that, even, isn't that a problem? What were we going to say? It's, it's, it's absolutely, I'm sorry, it's absolutely a problem. And one of the things that we're doing to help effectuate this change is, you know, the Rooney rule's tied to the assumption that, President's owners are going to do the right Quincy thing, hire the best, most qualified right. candidate. Yeah. What we want to do is tie, you know, certain things to performance and action through this. But, but Brian, the reason I, 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 the timing is really important here because you're actually up for two additional NFL jobs right now. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. why, why did you do this knowing from your own statement that you may have sacrificed your future in the NFL and you're a young man? Yeah, well, I, I mean, I, I, I let both the teams know that, you know, we we're gonna we we're gonna file, but look, I love coaching. You know, I'm gifted to coach. I know that. Um, and the relationships I've built with players, coaches, support staff, uh, I'm gifted to coach, and I love coaching. And I want to coach. Um, and I've heard from this... reliable sources you're a very good coach. <laughs> Let the no record show. It. 
Uh, Always room for improvement. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> I, I like to think that as well. Um, but this is bigger than coaching. Of course. Um, this is much bigger than coaching. Now, we'll get back to the lawsuit um, in regards to the Broncos and the Giants, but I want to talk about the Miami Dolphins for a second. Me to um, you make claims that you were offered $100,000 for each game this team lose um, subsequently uh, to get a better draft pick. Um, kind of speak on that, because you don't hear about that going on behind closed doors. I'm a former player. I know you as a coach. You want to win. There's no shot against a job after this, right? Like, I, 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 it's just like the NFL's not rigged. Uh, copium is, is silly. Like, the NFL is rigged in the sense that, like, Teams throwing games is unacceptable. He will definitely be he will definitely be blackballed. Uh, teams throwing uh, teams throwing games is unacceptable. But like teams playing poorly specifically so they can like get better draft picks. I thought that was like a known thing, right? Owners are good old boys with a fraternity. Same reason why Cavernin got blackballed. They pay to lose stuff. We'll get the most action because of the gambling partnerships. Maybe as a coordinator, but he'll never be a head coach. But he knew that going in, and that's why it's a brave move. Win. I walk in that locker room. I want to win. I don't hear people from the front office and above making those type of decisions that can change the outcome of your coaching career. Uh, yeah, uh, look, this game's done a lot for me. Um, I grew up not far from here in the projects in, in, in Brownsville, Brooklyn. Um, and didn't grow up with a lot. And this game, you know, changed my life. Uh, so to attack the integrity of the game, that's, that's what I felt was happening in that instance. And um, I wouldn't stand for it. And that was Dolphins owner, Stephen Ross. Yes. Yes. So. And you think it hurt your career? I, 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 think, it, I think it hurt my standing with, with, within the organization um, and ultimately was the reason why I was let go. Well, word on the street now, though, Brian, is What's that up, either baby? you torpedoed Take your career, that this is the side. craziest thing you could have done, or that it's very brave and very bold of you to do. How are you feeling? Are you? I mean, he definitely torpedoed his career, and it's also a brave and bold thing to do. Almost a year. Love you, Chad Hassan. You are also alleges that he interviewed the Broncos in 2019, but John Elway and the owner were drunk as f and obviously weren't taking the interview seriously. Another toke interview to satisfy the Rooney rule. Peace with your decision, and was this a very difficult decision for you to make to file a lawsuit before you have a job? Uh, uh, I understand the risk. And yes. Wait, from what I understand, didn't they put a shitty roster together? Okay, look, this is where, my, this is the extent of my sports ball knowledge. But from what I understand, yes, tanking is usually more discreet. Usually it's purposely putting together a shitty roster and having the losses pile up naturally. Except they did that in Florida and he still coached the shitty roster too well. Uh, and, and that's why he was like, dude, I'll give you more money. Allegedly. It was a difficult decision. So they could get, so they could get better draft um, picks. And like I said, I, I, I'm, I love coaching. I do. Um, it's something that um, I'm passionate about. It brings me joy. Um, and I love helping young people reach their potential and become the best versions of themselves. I'm gifted to do that. Brian. Um, but this is bigger than, than that. I mean, can I just say, in 2022, the fact that we don't have one black owner, we only have one black head coach. That's actually what I want to you know, he, I mean, you know, Really, Brian needs to be applauded for stepping forward to be the first person to really contest it. It's been talked about. Well, you've heard you know, the statement. But, that, but now he has stepped forward to yeah. challenge it. You've heard the statement from the NFL and a statement, diversity is core to everything we do. There are a few issues on which our clubs and our inter in internal teams spend more time on. Yeah, they've acknowledged but, their problems. You know, the executives there have acknowledged their problems. Now they're, the PR team is trying to spin something. You know, they could take two different paths. They could, they could take the path of trying to defend and litigate, or we hope, that they take the path and they're, of they're actually trying to correct things to be an example not only what is this oh my god is that a lot of black <laughs> players or a lot of great <laughs> black baseball men who would dearly love to be in managerial positions and i guess what i'm really asking you is to you know peel it away a little bit just tell me why do you think it is is there still that much prejudice in baseball today no i don't believe it's prejudice i i, I truly believe that they may not have some of the uh, necessities to uh, be, uh, f let's say, a field manager or p perhaps a, a general manager. Do you really believe that? Well, I don't say that they're all of them, but there they certainly are short. How many quarterbacks do you have? How many pitchers do you have that are black? 
It, it same yeah, but thing I mean, you know, I got to tell you, that sounds like the same kind of garbage we were hearing 40 years ago about players when they when they were saying, ah, not not not, not really, not well, really um, cut out. Hey, you remember the days, you know, they hit a black football player in the knees, and you know, no, that really sounds like garbage. If you if you forget no, that, it's, so. it's not it's not garbage, Mr. Koppel, because uh, I played on a on a college team, and the center fielder was black. And then backfield at NYU with it. Yeah, he's got black friends, bro. It's not racist. He played with other black players, dude. Everybody knows. Everybody knows you can't be uh, racist if you've, like, been around black people famously. The fullback who was black never knew the difference of whether he was black or white. We were teammates. So... What is the... What are we supposed to... Inf what's the... Uh, what are we supposed to get out of what he just said? So he knows black people are incapable? Is that what he's saying? He's like, no, 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 it's not garbage. I've, I've been around, I've been around black people. So I know for a fact that they can't, uh, they don't have what it takes to be a, a general manager. I'm an expert, dude. <laughs> like, that's what he's saying. That is, that's his argument. He's just, oh my God. It just might be that they, they, why are, are black uh, men or, or black people not good swimmers? Because they don't have the buoyancy. Hassle, 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 thankful. Wait, what? Black people don't have the buoyancy? What the f Are you serious? What the f That is, yo! Yo! That's some good old fashioned, old school racism, dude. He was like, let me, let me crank up the racism dial to the maximum degree before getting off the show. He was like, I didn't say enough. He, he's like, I didn't say enough in the beginning part, I think. I couldn't make myself clear. Let me just click, crank it out to 11 before... Oh, it's on. It's in my hand now. I broke it. Oh, God damn it. Yo, his apple pie must taste amazing. Oh, yeah, dude. 100%. Has Sammy, has Sammy, has high, has high. That's awesome. That's crazy. Dude, there's a joke from the South related to slave ship jumpers. Holy shit. I, I can't tell if he's joking or if he unironically believes that like black people are more dense and, and less buoyant and therefore can't swim well. Or if he was just like straight up making a joke. Dude, my sister's bio teacher in Missouri said black people have denser bones this was in 2010. Oh my God. Only for the NFL, but for American society to and lead by example. When you talk about the owners, you know, you got 31 white billionaires, oh, and then the Packers have a special situation. 70% about of the players are, are black. Uh, it, it, there's a power dynamic that's visible there. Yeah. In the lawsuit, there's this explosive line that the NFL is managed much like a plantation. That's a, a direct quote. Why did you decide to settle on that metaphor? Seven months. Uh... I, just, I think, I, I think, uh, look, we, we didn't hit, the, we didn't have to file a lawsuit for I'm gonna the back. world to know that there's a problem from a, from a hiring standpoint in regards to minority coaches in the National Football League. The numbers speak for themselves. Right. Uh, we filed the lawsuit um, so that we could create some change. Um, and that's important to me. I think we're at a fork in the road right now. You know, we're either going to keep it the way it is mm -hmm. or we're going to go in another direction and actually make some real change where... Um, we're actually changing the hearts and minds of those who make decisions to hire uh, head coaches, um, executives, et cetera. And I that's where we got to get to. We got to change hearts Brian, and minds. Brian, I heard someone say, but don't companies or clubs have the right to hire the person they think is the best qualified for the job or the person they feel is right for the Whatever job? Whatever race they are. Whatever race they are, yes. They do, you know, uh, and, and, and that's, that's, that's very reasonable to me. But at the same time... Uh, yeah. There are, uh, I know, a, very, uh, a lot of very capable coaches, executives, um, minorities, uh, coaches, executives who are minorities, um, and in a lot of cases are um, as qualified, um, more qualified, and quite frankly, better than, than, than their white con counterparts. They're, they're yeah, not, but given, the difference not, not here, given though, the opportunity. They're, they're not given an equal opportunity. Exactly. And, you know, when we talk about this fork in the road that the NFL has, and, Gail, you talked about the statement that they released denying and saying that they're going to defend what was absent from their response to the 60-page yeah. complaint with serious allegations from a decorated head coach is, how about we'll investigate? We're troubled by this. Yeah. We'll look into it. Immediate, you know, no denial disregard. and disregard and defend. Yeah. But I mean, that part was really funny that the NFL was like, oh, no, uh, yeah, that's this is untrue. How do you know, mother? you didn't even look into it? 
It took you two hours after the lawsuit came out. You didn't even read it. You're just like, nope, not true. Oh, cool. Okay, got it. It's fine. The point about the companies have the right to hire who they think is best qualified. I, I, we all agree with that. But the difference here, if what you're saying is true and you seem to have receipts, they knew ahead of time that you weren't going to get the job. So okay. I'm thinking, why waste your time and theirs? And the word minority is, is, it's loaded because it has different connotations. Yeah. We might be marginalized in certain areas. But our contributions to this game, both on the field and outside of the lines, are immense. Yeah. And when you have quality coaches that are available, that are gifted Pay and can lead teams but not getting the Those opportunity, the that's why you are standing for what I you're standing COVID. for. I um, but I want you to have cold, one last word. Cold cold facts. That's right. Yeah. One last thing, I'll let you say this, but you still want to coach in this league. I absolutely want to coach in this league. But I also know that this isn't, I'm not the only story here. Yeah. I'm not the only one with a story to You're tell. You're speaking up for decades I'm, of this I'm, going on this and is, hopefully stopping it from is, happening. This is, you know, there are people who have come before me and, 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 and um, I know there are others who, who, have, a, who have similar stories and um, it's hard to speak out. Um, it is, you know, yeah. you're giving up, you're making some sacrifices, but... Um, this is, again, this is bigger than football. This is bigger than coaching. Thank you for using your voice. You're doing the right thing. Thank you. Yo, there we go. Black people make up 13% of the population, yet nearly 60% of the athletes in the NFL. But people in the NFL is, but still the NFL is systemically raised against black people. The system is con conspiring to make them world famous millionaires. I'm so glad that Brian Flores is explo exposing the plot. Love that, dude. Of course, the theocratic fascist. With the most incredibly predictable take, dude. I don't understand. Like, plantations are uh, comprised 70% of black people. What the f***? Uh, guess what, Sweaty? Seems like we're, uh, you know, giving meaningful employment to black people in, this, uh, in the antebellum South, so... Since my second year of college, and now I'm in my second year of med school, lol, W2. Good one, Matt. Good one, dude. Where is it? I, I think I have this already. Being a Jets fan is realizing a rival coach was offered 100 stacks to let you win and you still couldn't pull it off. <laughs> ah! That's what he looks like. Billionaire, by the way. Flies in his private jet to get that haircut, by the way. Hey, if you like this video, please subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. <laughs>